Hey guys, so today's video is going to be another electrical video. It's been a little bit since I did an electrical video. This is a little bit different in the sense we're talking about electrical distribution instead of just like household or electronic use. This is kind of, this is a very rough demonstration of how power is distributed to your house through the electrical grid. And obviously three phase power is used, so an appropriate example would be three of this set up, but we just got one. So but we just got one set up for, just to make it simple. So basically what we got going here, let's plug it in. This is just a switch box. It runs straight into the primary side of this microwave oven transformer. This uh, 120 volt light bulb is wired up in parallel with the primary, just to demonstrate that there is 120 volts on this side. The transformer steps it up to approximately 2100 volts. And we're using the workbench and the steel plate as to represent the ground. So usually, most of the time, the ground will be the conductor for that. Sometimes there is a separate ground wire, but for demonstration purposes, we we'll kind of get the idea. So it comes in on the prime. This is off right now. It comes in on the secondary side of the high voltage transformer, and it works in reverse to drop it back down to 120 to the other light bulb. I put a receptacle here so we can put another load on it to demonstrate another part of it. Let's look at it real quick. Flip it on. So this light bulb's on. This one's on over here as well. It's 2100 volts between that wire and the workbench. Which is also grounded too, just for precaution. Get the workbench grounded. So let me shut it off and unplug it. And we'll talk about what's going on here a little bit more. The main thing I want to talk about is why high voltage is used, and it's fairly simple really. Uh, the price of wire is pr what it pretty much all boils down to. Not only the price, but the size. So, let me figure up, let me write down the amperages and everything, we can look at that and give a better example of uh, why this is used. Probably should have done this first, but didn't think about it. So it kind of labeled everything. So this represents a basic substation which a substation is pretty much taking, this is just rough numbers, I don't know what the exact voltages are, but let's say 150,000 volts be coming in, and they drop it down to say 15 to 30,000 volts, and distribute it. This is what you'd see at the top of the telephone poles close to houses. Your high voltage lines are always at the very top of the pole. Then this would come down to, uh, this would be the, the, the round can looking transformer it's on the pole by your house it's hooked directly to your house this represents the wire going to your house so in this example the substation is actually a step up transformer so this would be more accurate as a generator feeding directly into this uh, distribution substation so this takes 120 volts up to 2100 volts then transforms it back down to 120 to feed to your house which is another thing I'll briefly mention this is just to simplify everything. Your house actually has 220, which is this times two. It'd be 120 to ground on both sides and 240 across the phases. So this is just a very basic uh, example. I'm just trying to keep things simple. So if you're familiar with Ohm's and Watt's law, <clears throat> this applies to Watt's law. Power stays the same minus efficiency loss so in a perfect world the wattage or power will stay the same so this transformer is seeing a hundred watt okay that's another thing i'm going to mention real quick i'm using a hundred watt light bulb as an example these are actually leds that draw hardly nothing but for this example we'll pretend that they're a hundred watt incandescent bulbs so we got a hundred watts running through this line here but it's at an extremely high voltage so it's at a very low amperage so this is your distribution transformer. It's when you're pulled by your house. You got 100 watts again. So this is the, set, that's the only thing that's loaded on this. So you're running 0.83 amps compared to 0.04 amps on this. So it may not sound like it means that much, but if if we amplify this to uh, exaggerate this a little bit, you might get a better understanding of why this is used. So let's say your house is pulling 10,000 watts, which is 
not usually going to happen all at one time, but let's just say for this example it is. And we're keeping it simple with 120 volts just for this demonstration. So 10,000 watts divided by 120 volts equals 83 amps. So that amplifies on this. 10,000 watts divided by 2100 volts, 4.7 amps. So even at a very high load at your house, you're still not having very much amperage at all on this line. And a matter of fact, this cable being this small would actually carry the 4.7 amp load in this example. So, but in order to carry the 83 amps, <clears throat> you're going to have to have a wire bigger than this feeding this 50 amp receptacle right there. So, this is the reason high voltage is used. First of all, high voltage will transmit very long distances without much of a voltage drop. And if it does have a voltage drop, there's always different taps on the high voltage side of this to compensate for it. Which is why you'll see your voltage will vary house per house and unless they run off the same transformer. And there's a certain range that it, it's acceptable. So it's rarely ever exactly 120 volts. I don't think I've ever actually seen 120 volts. But I have seen like 118 all the way up to like 126. So that's what usually causes that <clears throat> variation. Which is not enough to affect the performance or longevity of uh, uh, electrically operated equipment. If you get up past like 130 then you're going to start overpowering it. And if you go below it, it's going to be under power and it will try to use more amperage to compensate it and it will end up burning stuff up sooner. Alright, so there is problems with this design and it's obvious when the power goes out it's usually because of tree contact on the high voltage line. Either it physically breaks the cable and shuts it off or it just sits there and arcs and substations usually work if the load gets too high or there's a direct shorter in the line, it'll shut off, then come on, then go off, come on, go off. It tries to clear it out because if it's just a small branch or something, it'll usually burn itself out and it'll be all right. So if you ever see your power go on and off like two times and stay on, that's usually what happens. I'm pretty sure they're still set up for three chances. And that's when your power goes out because it sets the, the substation off and has to be manually reset. So then obviously they're going to go out and check for the problem before they try to power it up. But uh, that's usually what causes that. We're going to demonstrate this too. I got a piece of bark soaking. Hopefully we can burn it up through this. So we'll have to try that out here in a second. And this goes back to the early days of uh, electricity when they were trying to determine if AC or DC was going to be best for household and com even commercial power distribution. And the problem with DC voltage, it can't be transformed. You can cut the voltage down using like resistors and stuff. Then you're having variances in voltage. So in order to uh, carry a 10,000 watt load at a higher voltage, obviously, you're going to have to have a cable you know, two foot around. Instead of a little high voltage line like this, it'll carry the high voltage and the low amperage. So that is the main reason it just wasn't practical to distribute uh, DC power through uh, wires that are massive. And there's pictures of it when they were actually trying to use it and you see like massive cables like sagging between poles. It just wasn't practical. So that's the primary reason they went to um, high voltage AC power distribution. And three phase makes everything more efficient and everything else. So like I said this is just an example of one third of what would actually be used unless you're in like a rural area you will see a single high voltage line like this coming to your pole at your house but you usually will see this even in cities you'll see three wires at the top of the telephone poles and there'll be one come off going to like each street and they alternate the phases just to balance the load on it it's really interesting how uh, high voltage uh, electrical systems operate and um, there is one thing I've never liked and it has caused a lot of problems in households between your transformer on your pole which is the big cable you see running between your house and the pole there's no fuse there until it meets your breaker box so if you got a short circuit which is very rare but it can't happen like say here um, there's no way that 
the amperage can get so high that it's actually going to melt this wire and cause a fire obviously there is a fuse on the high voltage side if you see them take that pole and kick that fuse back in it's right here before it goes into the transformer which I never understood why there's not some type of overcurrent device on the primary side of these transformers all right so enough talk let's uh, do a couple more demonstrations of this and um, the first thing we're going to de demonstrate is the uh, what happens if you're just a basic short on this this light will probably dim down or stay off this one will be off instantly because uh, this is a direct short to this but th it's not going to drop the voltage down completely on this side especially if this is a high voltage situation but it'll be a direct short onto this to be the same as cutting this wire and putting it right to ground this will see no voltage if you look about right here I got a little piece of wire going down this is going to represent a short circuit you will see it arc I just got to get it set up just right in order for it to do that right now it's not enough voltage for it to drop there unplug it You've seen it arc through and it started melting the wire, but it uh, this light stayed on and that one went off. And we kicked the breaker. So now let's do something that's a little bit more realistic. A direct short's not going to happen usually unless a tree or something will fall on the pole or a pole breaks and it actually has ground contact. It'll be a direct short. And this is going to represent a tree actually falling or a branch falling either between the high voltage line or across the phases. This is a piece of bark, it's soaked in water. You see, even with that, it wasn't enough to affect the voltage on that side. I'm sure it probably dropped a little bit because it was a load right there. Uh, I was expecting it to do more than that, honestly. It's funny that you can see where it arced through when it was up. And this was the side that was up against it. It went in there, and it was trying to come through there. So if that was a high voltage, it would have completely burned up this. And it probably would have uh, tripped the breaker again because it had been too much power going through it. All right, so I got some nuts here just to space it up closer. And honestly, this is not the best example for something like this because it's such a low voltage. Even though it's high voltage at 2100 volts, it's not high enough to really arc through wood. But this will be a better example. As you can see. You've seen that light bulb flicker a few times. That represents like when it comes back on, you'll see a little, a little pulse. That's a better example. You've seen how it came on while it was still arcing. Then it started arcing all the way through and you lost voltage on this side. And when the substation detects, detects an overcurrent, it'll kick it off almost the way this breaker's doing. So that's actually a pretty good example of how it would uh, keep trying to clear it out. They would come on, and it detects a high, super high voltage, and it'll just keep trying to clear it out until it'll eventually detect a direct short like that, and it'll kick it off. Well, you probably want to see a close up of it, so let's do it again. That's actually a pretty good example of what would actually happen. It'll get to the point where it will clear its path like through the piece of wood and it'll just start arcing all the way through it. The first example when it was the full length across it is good if it's just like small like shrubbery kind of stuff. It would be what we would do. 
Let me hook this up on another circuit that will hook directly to the breaker box and we'll just burn it all the way out. Even while this is going on, this light bulb over here on the side is still on. <laughs> And that's not the best example because that's probably not going to happen in the real world. It's possible, but the wire gets so hot that it melted in two. And this would be an example of a direct short. And in this case, where there's no direct overcurrent device, the transformer would just, would just sit there and burn itself out. It's drawing so much power. See, it's starting to smoke already, and we don't want to burn it up. I'm just trying to demonstrate that it is getting very hot. And even after all that, I just got it touching right here, and we're back to normal. Uh, just to show you that uh, the transformer didn't get hurt in that experiment. Well guys, that was a pretty fun little video to make. A good little demonstration of why high voltage is used. I've been wanting to make this video for a real long time, and just never got around to it. Had the idea forever. I'm going to end this. It's way longer than I thought it would be. If y'all got any questions, comments, or suggestions for similar videos, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. So, thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you on the next one.